Welcome to the Christian Center Church Podcast. If you'd like to sow into this ministry, you can do so at the link below. Thank you for joining us, and we hope the message today will bless you. This morning, I want to minister a little while, what makes people different? Well, I bet every one of y'all got a list, amen. Well, the biggest thing why they're different, Brother Doug, is that they're not like me. That's what makes them the biggest difference. No, that's not true, but you know, it is true. One way it is or not. But you know what makes people really different is the choices we make. The choices we make. That's the only difference. How I many you look back and you said, if I would have only did so and so, if I wouldn't have did so and so, amen. Come on, you got to push in now. Some things you, you, you got to recover from and you could change things, amen. You know, it, it's, it, you know, God said he didn't believe he married the devil, but he believed he married his sister, amen. So. <laughs> You know, you know that was, how many of you know that was his choice? Yeah. You know, some people make the wrong choices, but you know, from the very beginning in the garden, it's been an opportunity to make correct choices. Amen. Yeah. And you know, and, and part of that choice, you know, what makes us different is that the ability to choose what God said over the self life. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something now. This might be news to some of you. Every now and then, he says stuff I don't like. It's bad on the flesh. It's bad on the old man. It's bad on Jerry. I told you when we stayed at the motel last week and, and they kept me up during the night, I wanted to knock on that door before old Jerry. I wanted to knock on that door before he left. Get sit to one to hold the elevator door, but it was way down to the other end. And I don't know if I could get down there in time and get her in that. No, that wasn't why I didn't do it. But anyway, I wanted to call them, wake them up. They was in 212. I wanted to wake them up, call them at 212. Y'all in there? Get up, 212. Get up. Who knows, that would have been a bad choice, amen. You know, and, and, you know, he said to forgive them and love them and go forward. You know, even counts at the Hotel 6, 9, 10 of the Hilton. How many of y'all believe that, amen? You know, and, and from the earliest time, we see that, that, that people uh, took direction from God or they did not take directions from God. You know, that, that in, in the case of Cain and Abel, how many of y'all believe that in the case of Cain and Abel, God's trying to point out something to us? Talking about talking about you loving your brother. He's talking about being in the correct place and, and doing those things. How, I mean, you know that sin will just take you into deeper sin. Yeah. Trouble just takes you into deeper trouble. Amen. Yeah. And whenever we get to that place that our attitude ought to be that we want instructions from God. Yeah. Now, most men, you can't tell them nothing until it's broke. <laughs> you can't tell men nothing until they put it together upside down and they look at it and say, well, that's not right. It, then they look at the instructions and find out it's upside down. <laughs> men don't like instructions for some reason. I'm, I'm not sure exactly uh, why men don't like them, but, but some men just don't like instructions, they mean. And, you know, if you and I are going to live for God, you're going to get a few instructions. You're going to be led. You're going to tell you. You're going to show you. You're going to be the one that, that, that expects us, come on, to do what he said. How I many of y'all believe that? Amen. You know, when I was a kid, they said, just do what we tell you. You won't get in trouble. And I was in trouble, so figure out what happened. Yeah. <laughs> you know that, how I many you know that, that whenever you are right with God, you'll be right with men? And I, I've said this many times before. And when a man is not right with uh, uh, God, he cannot be right with men. Right. And when a man is not right with men, he cannot be right with God. Why? Because I'm in his similitude. I'm, I'm his son. I'm his person. I, I'm him. And when you got problems with me, you got problems with him because he told you to love me no matter what was going on. Amen? You know, First John, uh, little John 1 and 3, uh, 10 through 12 says this. We, I'm just going to read. We won't stay. He said, This that the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness, is not of God. And neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that we heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. And the church said, love each other. Yes. Now he goes and he said, this is from the beginning. This is, this is the basics of the, of the gospel, is that we love each other and that we love the brethren. Verse 12, he said, not as Cain, who was the wicked one, that slew his brother, and therefore slew he him. Or he's asking, why did he slay him? Because why? Because his works were evil and his brother's was righteous. Now, you see that, that in the verse, go with me to Genesis 4, that he says that what the problem was, that Cain had a love problem, loving his brother. How many of you know that? I heard this many years ago, a man told me, he said, you know, if, if you'll love people, he said, it, it'll hide a lot of things with them. Well, I come to find out that love covers the multitude of sins. 
Now, that doesn't mean that uh, somebody do wrong and I'm just going to cover it up with love. That, that's not what it means. But when that causes me to stumble and cause me not to love them and cause me not to do the Jesus thing, cause me not to choose the direction of God, come on. Love covereth that multitude. The love will cover the multitude of sins. It'll cover it up for it and make it all right and make me able to go on. How many of you want to move forward? Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, if you're not careful, the world and people and the past and the devil and most of all yourself will keep me from moving forward, will it not? Can you see me? Amen. Now, we have something that goes on here in the garden and we have the birth of Cain and Abel and we, we see some things and it just progresses so fastly that it happens so fastly in, in Genesis 4 and 1. It said, And Adam knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I've got me a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother, or she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Now, there's something going on here. She said, I got me a man from the Lord. I believe she was looking for the Messiah. I believe she was looking for the one that was going to bruise the serpent's head. I believe she was looking for relief. You know, she, she's the one that came out of the garden. She knew what the garden looked like. How many of y'all know that, the, that they remember what happened? Can you say amen? Yeah. And it said in the process of time, you know, it, it said that she had another son, and, and, and he was a tiller of the ground, two different like people. How I many just because what you do for a living is not why God loves you? What you don't do for a living is not why God don't love you. He said, now this is the deal. He said, they're on two uh, totally different ends of the spectrum. One, one, that one keeps cattle or one is a, one that uh, uh, keeps sheep. And he said, and the other one, he's a keeper of the ground. He, how many know there's good, good recourse for both? Amen. Amen. It says, now, in the process of time, and the church said process of time. Now listen, in the process of time, something happened. There was instruction, had to be. There was some kind of something happened. He said, in the process of time, Cain brought the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. And Abel also brought the firstling of the flock thereof and the fat thereof, the flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel, but offering, but unto Cain's offering, he did not have respect or had not respect. And Cain was wroth. And his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why doest thou wrath? Or what's wrath? Why are you mad? What you upset for? He said, Why is it that thy countenance had fallen? He said, If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall his desire be, thou shalt have rule over him. And Cain talked with his brother uh, Abel, and his, excuse, Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the church said, slew him. Now, I want you to know, unresolved stuff leads into unresolved stuff. Yeah. Problem with the brethren, brethren, <laughs> problem with the brethren <laughs> leads to problem in your relationship with God. Now he got there, everything was looking good, and, and they brought it, and everything looks like it should have been. And I mean, y'all know God's calling the shots. Amen. What God says is good is good, and what God said is bad is bad. What God said is wholesome is still wholesome. What God said is not good is still not good. Can somebody say amen? amen. Now there's a way to do things, and the Bible said that there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end is there of destruction. I've seen people say, if that was me, I'd do so and so. No, if you were Micah, you would do what Brother Micah does. You wouldn't. <laughs> you would do just what you do, not what he do. And when you get there, since you are him, <laughs> you're going to make the same decision he made. Can somebody say amen? You know? And he asked him, you know, and asked him, the Lord said unto Cain, uh, where is thy brother? You know what he said? He said, I don't know. He said, am I my brother's keeper? You see, when you're not right with God, you're not right with the brother, and it takes you away from God and takes you into a lifestyle that you have to lie about the way you feel and what's going on in your life. Amen. And he said, what has thy done? God's asking him, he said, what has thy done? Thy brother's blood cried to me from the ground. And now art thou art cursed from the earth, and, and which openeth her mouth and received thy brother's blood from thy hand. He said, when thou tillest the ground, thou shalt henceforth not yield unto her strength, or it shall not henceforth yield her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. And Cain said, I shouldn't have killed my brother. Cain said, I'm a feeling bad about what I did. Cain said, I should have stuck with the instructions. Cain said, my punishment is greater than I can bear. 
See, he got to the place whenever it got to him, it was more about him than the death of his brother. Amen. You know, a certain truth can be seen here. The truth is, how many of y'all know that Hebrews says that by faith, Abel offered a more better sacrifice? Well, actually, it says in the King James, a more excellent sacrifice than his brother. He said, and yet being dead, he yet testified of him. Amen. You know, can you imagine that, that through all the time that, now we're talking in the garden, we're talking about the first, first set of known kids in the garden. And we, have, we have jealousy, we have division, and we have murder, and we have no care and, and attempt to cover up. Amen. You can cover up anything you think you want to, but God sees right through it. Now, isn't this amazing? Now, now I'm, I'm going to go on because I'm, I'm running my rabbit. Amen. This is for Sister Brenda. I'm running my rabbit. Isn't it crazy? How that a person can't get past their past when they really can get past it. They keep letting this stuff come up, keep letting this stuff come up, keep letting this stuff happen. And whenever people think they're getting by, they don't deal with stuff and it seems like it don't come up. It's just impossible. This stuff must come up and we must push it down. And if we're not pushing it down, we find reason to feel the way that we know what he told him. He said, you know what it takes to do well. Why don't you do what you know to do? Amen. You know, I, sometimes I just don't feel loved over there. Well, let me tell you what the best thing to do. If you don't feel loved over here, get to loving. Amen. Yeah. I dare you to tell me you love me. I'll tell you something back to what I'll do. <laughs> I love Brother Jose. He come up to me and he hug me and excuse my impression, but I love doing Brother Jose. He said, I love you. I said, I love you too, brother. I love you. And never didn't tell me I earned it. Didn't tell me that I paid for it. He just loved me like I am and, and has been a friend here for me for years because he loved me. Quiet man, but, but his, his stance with the Lord speaks for a lot. Can you say amen? amen. You see, that, that you can love your brother. I'm sure he probably hadn't agreed with everything with me. Come on, Come on but, but he didn't slay me. <laughs> He'd protect me, amen. He, he'd get between me and him, amen. You know, and, and Abel acted upon, you know, the, the faith. He acted by faith. He said he by faith gave. So let me tell you what. You can't operate in faith by something you don't know about. I said you can't operate in faith about something you don't know about. So there must have been, in the process of time, there must have been a, a, a set of rules. There must have been some ordinance. There must have been the way we do it because Abel is working by faith. And he had faith, and so what he did, he, bring the lamb, he brought the, the, the lamb there, or the sheep, or the, excuse me, the uh, sheep thereof, and he brought the fat thereof. He did direction. What did Cain do? Cain did what he wanted to. I said Cain did what he wanted to. You know, it's not a matter if it was good or bad. It was a matter of was it the will of God. Same thing today. It's not, you know, it's not a, 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 if it's good or if it's bad. He tell us to do something, we should do it. You understand that when, when Adam and Eve were in the garden, everything was by God's will, God's plan, what God has said. Nothing was sin. They knew not sin until they partake of the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. They, they, they were living grace bliss. They were living in what God said. God said, do this. This is the way we do. This is what we do. We, they had no question. Let me tell you, we would do a lot better if we wouldn't question what God wants us to do and go ahead and do what God wants us to do. Can somebody say amen? It's not a matter if it was a good idea. It's not the same as today. You know, it, it, the great difference between the two of them, it was Cain and Abel. Well, let me tell you, you know what? It wasn't so much the difference in the person as it was in their situation, they chose to act in. How many of you know both of them were born after the fall? Amen. Both of them had fallen parents. Yeah. Both of them, you know, it wasn't like one was born. Well, I was born when mom and daddy were in the garden. Yeah. I was going say, well, you know, I was born after the garden. I got excuse. We can't be in the garden. Y'all was raised in the garden. But, you know, how many of you know that's not the deal? Amen. Right. They both were born, and nothing tells us that, that Cain was an infidel. Nothing tells us that Cain was wicked outside the scripture tells us that by his choice of not doing what God said. How I many of y'all know it's a choice? I'm going to look at you and tell you the truth. I love that. I'm, I'm tell you, I'm, I'm the mayor of Realville. Hey, man, I'm running for governor. <laughs> you know, sometimes I got to make Jerry Miller do right. 
Now, I'm going to tell you, I got years in this. <laughs> and I still choose. Come on. And you know, that, but both were falling. And, and mo- can, can you imagine? Now, think about this. Think about this. They're sitting around. There's, there's no YouTube. There's no MeTube. There's no YallTube. There, there's no Facebook. And there's no Twitter. And there's no Twick. There's, <laughs> there was, there's no InstaSnap or whatever. The guy. <laughs> he said, he don't know nothing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but, you know, they still had information. They still knew what to do. He, he still knew what was going on. And then after, after the fall, now you, they have to be talking about it. You know what we're doing? Well, uh, why we can't get on the other side of that flaming sword? Well, that's where we used to live. <laughs> he said, used to live? He said, yeah, that's where mom and daddy ate us out of house and home. I said, where we used to live. <laughs> He said, what happened? He said, well, we went over there and we partake of his truth. We diso- was a disobedient to God. And it didn't seem like a big thing at the time. And we was deceived. And God put us out of the garden. And we're out here now. And so that's why we're out. Because we didn't do what God told us to do. We, we went and seen in our own eyes and our own likeness. And what we thought was right. And we did what we thought was right. That's how we are right now. And you know what? They had to know. That God had some type. A blind, some type of order, some type of, of, of something to follow in with. How many of you believe that? Some people say, I just don't know what I'm going to do. Let me tell you, pray is what you ought to do. Find out what the scripture says and do what the scripture says. And don't go on feelings, but go by faith. And Abel offered by faith. So he must have had some instructions. Amen. You know, that, that he must have heard something. Can you imagine the stories they tell? And it, they brought God something. It was by their actions that God uh, moved toward them or they were moving toward God in a sacrifice. And by obedience, Abel, you know, when he, he brings the sacrifice, he brings it to the revealed will of God. How many of y'all believe God reveals his will? Amen. Now, he must have knew what to do. He had to at some point. You know, you know that, that nature will tell you this. You know, n- nature, uh, 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 after a while, what nature does, it picks out the best and brings forth the best. If you get plants or whatever, after a while, you'll get one prime thing, and it'll try to follow that. And, you know, nature even itself tries to do the better of the better. It doesn't get the worst blade of grass to make corn. It gets the, uh, by, by, by selection or however, that when the corn came from a grass, gla- grass blade, I'll get it out. I mean, can you imagine? Corn's just really nothing but grass. That the seeds they pro, uh, bring the grass and made a very wise decision to make the corn and make it better and make it better and make it better and make it better. That we got what we need. Let me tell you what. God's plan is to make us better, make us better, make us better. And as we grow, we grow into it. As we mature, we grow into it. And something else happens, we mature in it. So when Cain got there and Abel got there, they didn't get down there blind. They didn't know what was going on. Did not know. They knew exactly what God offered. And lots of times people would say, well, I just don't know what the will of God is. Do what's right. Do what he would do. Do not break Scripture or nullify Scripture to do what you want to, and you'll find yourself pretty close to the will of God. Can you say amen? Amen. You know, when he tells you uh, to love people and to forgive them, that means you don't need to stay in bitterness. When he tells you to let it go, when he tells you to release things, that's a good idea. If you're holding to things to know, you're holding to the wrong things, and you're not holding to what the Scripture says. Can somebody say amen? Amen. You know, but yes, give God glory. Because between the two of them, the difference was this. It wasn't that one man was worse than the other man. It wasn't one that, that one man was closer to God than the other man. It was like this, that one made a plan to stay with the terms and the conditions of what God said, and the other man decided not to stay with the terms and the conditions that God has set for. Now, let me tell you what. Are y'all ready? Getting even with people feels pretty good in the beginning. But it puts you in last place. You want to get ahead of somebody, forgive them. You want, you, you want to get past the situation, go ahead and be merciful to them. If you want, you want to grow and, and be like the Father and you want to grow and, and be like the gift Christ Jesus, is do what he did and, and no matter how it makes you feel. Because it doesn't. Let me do it right. don't always feel good. No, you get them warm, cozy feelings. You wrote that check or you did something, you felt good. And you did something and you felt real good about it. You know? But sometimes just uh, uh, p- uh, putting Jerry in check, it don't feel good about it. Yeah, but I, I, if I don't tell him, he's going to do it again. <laughs> 
Well, you know, the Lord like, I'll tell him. How about that? Now, yeah, you tell him. How I many know the Lord tell him and he's convicted to do better than what you could do? Amen. Amen. You know that, that people, you know, uh, uh, it's their fashion of thinking. How I many you know that? Everybody has a, uh, you know, Cain like today. You know what Cain did? Cain said, I'm going to take this down here. This is what I'm going to take down there. This is what I'm going to bring. And I believe he brought some good stuff. How many of y'all believe he brought good stuff? I don't believe that Cain brought a bunch of uh, uh, wilted tomatoes or whatever. I don't believe he brought any of them. I believe he brought fine stuff. And how many of y'all know if we would all have garden food today, it would be typified that it was healthy? If you looked at canes and, and looked at meat, the, the, uh, meat and beef and pork get such a bad spill nowadays that it looked like this, this vegetable job was a produce, a ground produce product would be a good thing to have. He put them down there, but no, he had instructions. See, see we know what people want to do. People want to do in their own fashion. People want to forgive in their own fashion. Now, look, they had instructions. They're going down there to worship. They're going down there, said, in the process of time. They know about this. They not just showed up, didn't say anything like this. Went, went down there, and, and, and there was Cain, and Cain got ready to go and, and got his stuff together and went down there. And, and his brother looked at him and said, oh, man, I need to get me something and go down there. No, they knew. In the process of time, they knew what God required and had to. But how did they know that? Because Abel did it by faith. You can't do anything by faith that's not of the word. You can't do anything by faith that you don't know to be obedience to it. You can't do anything by faith that you don't know that you should be doing. Can somebody say amen? amen. But you know today people want to forgive by their own forgiving. When it gets to feeling they made them suffer long enough. You feel about, well, third time Brother Jerry said something about this month. I'm just going to have to forgive him. But Jerry keeps talking about that giving. I look like I'm going to have to give God's money to it. <laughs> but you know, some people love in the, in the way they want to love. Well, he acts like me love, he loves me, so I'm going to love him back. They act like they care about me. I'm going to let them in my life. You see what he wanted to do? Cain wanted to go down there and do it the way he wanted to. Let me tell you what you need to do and I need to do and they need to do. We need to come down here and do it the way the Word of God tells us and be led by the Spirit of God. Forgive people. Walk in mercy. Not be a murderer. Don't be an unforgiveness. Don't be in something. He said, he said why, why are you counting this down? What's the problem? Where, where you at? Where you at? You know what he's asking him? He said, you're responsible for where you are today. You know, that's one thing people really don't want to do. Y'all quiet this morning, that's okay, but I don't feel a pushback. I feel a drag up, amen, coming to you, amen. But you know, that's what people want to do. People want to be in charge of their own forgiveness, in charge of their own giving, in charge. Yeah. Now, if you, by faith, let the Scriptures be in charge of your giving. By faith, let the Scriptures be in charge of your forgiving. By faith, let the Scriptures be in charge, and you love people according to the Word of God. Yes. Come on, get God glory, because it's a... Listen to me. God, God never fell in love with not one of us because of what we did. But God was already in love. That he got so loved that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believe upon him should not perish but have everlasting life. He, the son of man came to seek and to save that which is lost. He loved, so God loved, amen. It was already out. You see, but what some people, when they get past what it feels like, uh, then, then they might allow somebody in their life. And they get past uh, being uh, uh, with the walls up. Let me tell you what, we can't have some kind of preconceived idea on how we're going to love people, forgive people, be a giver, or take direction from the Word of God. We need to be led by the Spirit of God. And do what the Word of God says, whether it's popular or not. And it doesn't matter if them on the other side of the room is doing it. It matters if you're doing it. Amen. Oh, Brother Jerry just let the whole side of the room off for us. So just to keep it in balance. Not them over there, but you. How I many of y'all understand what I'm saying? You know, that came, so you look good. I believe you brought good fruit down. I, brought, I believe you brought good stuff down. You know, so why would you know? I know people, and I know gardeners, and I know people that produce something. They want to show it. They, 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 they want to say, look, what, look, look they, they, they're proud of their product. They're proud of what they did. Come on, that's why people pass them on, amen? I seen people that told me this one day. He said, Brother Jerry, I started bringing you some of them tomatoes, but they's all spotted up. First thing, don't tell me about tomatoes I don't get. 
Second thing, spotted tomatoes don't bother me. Why would you want to tell me about tomatoes that are spotted up that you didn't bring me? Maybe they detected in the spirit, thank you. I said, maybe they detected in the spirit that you're going to be a spot looker when they give them to you, Brother Jerry. So we're not going to give them to you to keep you from looking bad. I guess I'll let you off too. But you know, what, what, what was wrong with it? You know, first thing you know, it was bloodless. How I many of y'all know that without the shedding of blood, there, there is no remission of sins? Now, there have to be something they know, church folks. They, they, they have to know something. Said, said something dying, we're at. Well, how I many of y'all know that God got skins and gave them to uh, um, Adam and Eve? Now, I don't know how you get skins off an animal and keep it alive. I don't know yet. Something had to die and immediately for their shame. And he said, what's wrong with you? He said, I was naked. He said, who told you you was naked? I mean, y'all know that the first thing that changed in the garden was their sexuality. You know, one of the biggest problems in the latter day church today is sexuality. Well, we'll do that some other time. I don't even have to write that down since because they know since already since. We'll be back since, I mean. But in the process of time, see, when the time got right, it comes. Let me tell you what, there, there's a time for you and I to be busy. There's a time you and I to be doing that. But we need to do that according to the Scripture, not according to our feelings. Not because, and whenever he offered something, he, he, he brought something. You know what his problem was? It was bloodless. He had to know something about it. And the second thing was something of his own self and his own deal, his own abilities. Look at me real quick. God wants you... Not your abilities. I say God wants you. Not your ability. See because some people can't serve God. Because they don't think you like him. Or like her or them. And they hold back and get squared. No he don't. He don't want you for what you can do. He wants you for what Jesus has done. And he gave his life for you. Amen. And he wants you to come as you are. And by faith take hold of the scriptures. And believe the scriptures. And what the scriptures said. Amen. You know, you know, you know, malice in the heart. Mal- I mean, you know, he had malice. He had problems. Amen. And the, uh, malice in his heart became a murder in his hands. You know, he slew his own brother. Can you imagine that? Slew my brother, my, my mother's son. Can you imagine? I got to look at my mama. I killed her son. Why'd you kill her? Because God, because God said his stuff was good and mine was bad. Mine was, he didn't even really say it was bad. He just rejected it. <laughs> Why did he reject it? Because he knew what he should bring. He knows what he should bring down to please God. Every one of us know what we are to be doing. You know, they, I ain't going down, you know, them, you know what I mean? I ain't going to help them. They get plenty of money. They don't need my money. No, but you need to give the money. Not them. It's you that need to give the money. <laughs> it's you that needs to forgive uh-oh. It's you who need to quit looking that way and look back this way. You said, Brother Jerry, you don't understand, but I'm here to tell you I do understand. <laughs> you know what? Listen to me. Do you know what he thought? He thought he was going to get by. Why didn't he just not bring anything? Why, why didn't he just not bring anything? Why didn't he just not show up? When he said, well, I, I know, I know uh, Abel's going to have the best, so I didn't even come down there. You know what he did? He tried to come in his own power, his own habit, his own way. He's just like people today. They forgive like they want to. They give like they want to. They talk like they want to. That, that they're friendly to who they want to be. Yeah. Wow. You know, that, that brother Chaz, he's kind of an odd fellow. You know, he's different, you know. Yeah, I like him. That's the reason I like him. He is different. <laughs> You can hand him a ponytail, and he won't take it. I'm going to a ponytail holder. He won't use it. I'm going to tell you, he's good for that, Amy. You know what? He came down thinking that he could get by with what he wanted. We can't get by with what we want. We need to get by with what he wants. And, what, and he told him, he, he said, what you done? He said, he said, where's your brother? He said, am I his keeper? Now, he's done killed his mother's son. Lying to his God and hasn't repented yet. Now y'all tell me we don't serve a merciful God, a loving God. You know, it could be one verse down here. 
uh, uh, well, he killed his brother, and God killed him on the spot. They said, "Woo, look what happens to people. No. You know what God wanted? He, he, wanted, he wanted Cain the same as he wants you and I. He wanted Cain to come out of obedience. He wanted Cain to come out of respect. He wanted Cain to come out of, out of doing what God had said do. I had this woman. I didn't know what it meant. I didn't, I didn't even know what it meant. I didn't even know where she was quoting it out of. And she was quoting, quoting it out of the book of Job. And she was said, I'll serve you, Lord, though you slay me. Man, that sounds like, you know, that sounds like business right now. But I'm first thing thinking, why is God trying to slay you? That's what I want to know. Second thing, you ought to stop doing that. Third thing, don't put in question you're going to serve him. Just go ahead and serve him. Amen. You know, his sacrifice was, was uh, Abel's sacrifice was according to the will of God. See, when you come down here and give, you ought to give with a free heart. When you come down here and forgive, you ought to give because that's, you're like him and that's what he requires of you. How I many of y'all know that, that forgiveness is not a feeling? Forgiveness is an act of faith. Forgiveness is an act of obedience. Forgiveness, it, it, I'd rather have what God said than feel this way. And I have forgive before and not feel any different at the moment. After a while, I figured it out. Hey, I'm getting better. After I figured it out, I'm good. You know, and nothing tells us that, that he brought rotten vegetables down there. Nobody said he brought coals of his produce down there. I believe he brought good stuff. But he brought it of his own. He brought it of his own hands. He brought it of his own way. He brought it how he thought would be what God should have from him. God told him what he wanted to have, evidently, because Abel had it. Or he would have simply said, he's just like people like, we didn't know. We didn't know. We don't know. We didn't know nothing about it. Well, that's the best thing to do is fall back in what we don't know. Amen. But that wasn't it. You know, it tells that, that he had a more excellent sacrifice. It was more excellent. It was the way the sacrifice pointed to the blood shed of Jesus. How I many of you know that something had to die for us? His name is Jesus. Can somebody say Amen. Hebrews said, by faith, they were offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. He offered that which was excellent to God. Amen. What God thought was right. And his son, Jesus, is the correct sacrifice for this day. Can you say amen? But what we're going to have to do is learn to be like him, feel like him, talk like him, say after him, and do the above, not what he requires of, 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 of just anything, but what God requires in his word for us. Can somebody say amen? Well, it must have been, no, it probably was beautiful. You know, but what the problem was for the most part, he was religious. He was religious. Amen. He thought it would be okay. Amen. You know, when he asked him, he asked him, he said, he said, why thou, thou, uh, uh, why thou countenance fallen? He said, why are you upset? Look at me. Do you know sometimes when you're challenged for the right, it's uncomfortable? Sometimes you're challenged to feel correct about it. Well, what the word, word of God says, do that. Let me tell you what. Some things that God has asked me to do, I did not feel, I did not smell or feel. <laughs> smell is part of feel and <laughs> smell. <laughs> I didn't feel, come on, like I was doing the thrill. Whenever I, I, you know, when I ask forgiveness, I, I'm looking for it. I mean, when you ask forgiveness, you're looking for it. Amen. You know what we need to be just as intense on? We need to be just as intense on asking forgiveness for them and that their sins be forgiven just as big as you want your sins forgiven. Amen. Lord, I'm going to look over him this time. Lord, I'm not going to take a hammer to him this time. And I'm going to forgive him. I'm going to be in your scriptures today, Lord. And, and I'm going to forgive him. <laughs> and you look in his back pocket, he got a... Got a big hammer in his back pocket. <laughs> so I'm trying to tell you, when you walk in faith and walk in obedience to do the things that we need to do in our lives as individuals, it doesn't always feel right, but we do have the directions to do it right. That's right. Amen. Well, you know, I, I don't think the Lord means for today, well, you're reading the wrong book. What he meant then, he means now. What he said yesterday, he means today. And what he said today, he'll mean tomorrow. He is. Can you say amen? Yes. 
You see, but he had already had something. And it moved him. It moved him from rejection to murder and removed him even further from God with a lie like, I'm not my brother's keeper. You are my keeper. You should pray for me. I'm through with that bunch. <laughs> you know, with that. The amplified, you know, Genesis 7 says it this way. He says, he said, if you do well, believe me, believe me and do what is acceptable and pleasing to me. Believing me and doing what is acceptable and pleasing to me, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, huh, ignore my instructions. Sin crouches at the door and it desires for you to overpower you. But you must master it. And look, he just throwed it. Talk about free will. He just chunked it to us. He, he, he just throwed it. Cain, he said, wait a minute. He said, why? He said, you know what to do to get it right. You know what he was telling him? You knew what kind of sacrifice to come down here with when you came. Amen. You know. You know. So what, what's the problem? If you do right, it'll be all right. right. Isn't it amazing? I'm going on. I'm getting close. People try to serve God and they don't see, that's not good English, but they do not see what they think they are to see. And just because they don't see the product of what they think they are to see, they think that's not working, it's not God's will, or God didn't hear them, or that's not, or something wrong with me, or whatever. Let me tell you, you hold to God's word, believe what God said, and hold to that and not worry about what others say and what others do. Come on. Amen. If you know what to do, he said, he said, that please me. He said, will you not be accepted? He said, but if you ignore my instructions. Anybody in here ever ignored his instructions? Well, there's only two of us. There's Matt. There's three. There's four. There's five. All right, we're going to have deliverance for the other 25 of you. Come up here. We're praying with you. <laughs> Sister, sometimes it gets to be a job to hold on to the Lord, doesn't it? Yes, it does. You know what? It's a sign of maturity, a sign of growing. You know what kids don't want to do? Kids don't want to grow up. Kids don't want, kids don't want to stay the same. They don't, they don't want to grow up. Can you say amen? And he said, well, that, you know, it, it accepted, it means you shall be excellent. He told me, if you do what I tell you to do, you'll be accepted. Everything will be, every, everything will be okay with me and you. Everything will be, how I many of you know it's a Jesus only and Jesus only thing that's going to get this done today? Amen. And this points to the cross, it points to the sacrifice, it points to what God really wants. Now, isn't it amazing how good a God we serve? Yes. How many of y'all believe we serve the God that knows everything? Let me tell you, all time and everything, is. A, if we would say it is a river and it runs like that, God's on the top and he sees everything happens. He knows exactly what happened. And he can go right back over here and just put his foot in the river. Hold things up, move, amen. He's, he's intervened. You know what? That's what miracles are. Miracles are God intervening in, in the spiritual river slip of the world, the whole universe. He just stops and inserts himself. Now, that's pretty awesome when you get to thinking about it. He comes and just inserts himself. He could be here, there, 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 there. But he's choosing right here, right now, to touch our lives today and tell us if we're going to bring something to God, we need to bring it in the way that he's instructed us to come. If you're going to give it, get your hands off of it. If you're going to forgive them, really forgive them. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'll say it. Listen to me. Go ahead and forgive whether they say they sorry or not. I know that's a bad thing. We like to hear it. Most of us don't like to say it, but we like to hear it. Well, we're moving on. <laughs> Man, I didn't think y'all was bad on that, but I'm going to be back. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, you know there, there, there was no remorse for his, for his murder. There was no any remorse for that. You know, because he, you know what he did? He thought that he was correct. He thought that he was right. Amen. You know what we have to do is change how we feel and, and change the way we look at things. Romans says, I beseech you, my brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a, li li a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Yes, 
And be you not conformed to this world. Have they got it figured out? Or even the one you lived in, I'm saying. Be you not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Let me tell you, to really serve God, we need to come to the place to find out what's acceptable, what's perfect, and what that will of God is for our life. How many of y'all know your, your life's different from my life? What God has for you is different than what he has for me. And then there's some similarities, amen. You know, we got to get to that place and understand, you know, uh, what was wrong with Cain, it was bloodless. What was wrong with Cain, it was without instruction. What was wrong with Cain, it was without repentance. What was wrong with Cain, he wanted to stay where he was instead of admit where he was. you got to come to that place to understand that God knows where you are already. There's none of us hiding in here. You can't hide from God. Jonah tried that. <laughs> Didn't work out too good. Jonah tried then he goes over there and saves the whole country, saves the whole nation, saves everybody. And Jonah got mad. I, I was hoping you'd kill them all is what I was hoping. <laughs> but can you imagine the conviction he must have preached with to turn them around? Sack, sackcloths and ashes. And, and they, 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 they listening to a guy that came over. And, and where is he at? You know, that, that, that he, <laughs> I just don't understand where their head was at. Once they seen him, they turned around, but the man of God didn't want to turn around. And what was the problem? That he wasn't seeing the outcome in the way that he wanted to see it. Can you imagine a man that could preach so powerfully and move, move Nineveh, move the place, and God couldn't get him to move from where he was at? Amen. Just go over and, you know, I love it when I think about Jonah. I think about Brother Willis, Everett Ray Willis. And he said, people don't believe that a, that a whale swallow a man. But I would have said to God, I serve a fish swallow the world. <laughs> it's what I was talking about. That's what I was talking about. The fish just swallowed the world. I mean, so you don't think God can do that? Come on. You don't think God was that? Let me ask you. Let me tell you this morning. I want you to uh, consider bringing your best to the Lord. Had a guy, a local guy, he... Uh, had a good sized little settlement just to tell you how people go, you know. He had a little good sized little settlement, so he took that settlement that he got. He got 10% of the settlement out, Brother Chaz. He did good. He got 10% of it out there. But he put it in a money market. <laughs> and whatever it would make that year, he'd give to the church. <laughs> I mean, on the stock market, don't make money every year. <laughs> And then when he stops going to church over at that church, he stops giving it because he don't go. Let me tell you, don't be Lord of your tithe. Let God be Lord of your tithe. Don't be Lord of your giving. Let God be Lord of your giving. Let God be Lord of your forgiving. Let Lord, come on. Let God be, the, let him be ahead of how you feel and how you decide what's going to make your day or break your day. You know, I'm not very popular sometimes. I know that's hard to know. I know that's hard to believe and understand or know. But, you know, sometimes I tell people, you in charge of your day, and you know they don't like it. I said, well, you are in charge of your day. What do you mean I'm in charge of my day? <laughs> well, I mean that they don't have any right to cause you to feel that way, and you wouldn't feel that way unless they're led, you're causing you to feel that way, and you gave them the power over your feelings. Yes, yeah, a lot of power to give somebody over your feelings. Please, I, I'm, I'm going to rebuke anybody that tries to get power over my feelings. Man. <laughs> Them my feelings. <laughs> and you know what some people don't want to do? They won't allow God to be in charge of their feelings. They want God to be in charge of their forgiving. They don't want God to be in charge of their uh, of forgiving or their giving or their mindsets or where they are. Let me tell you, it's better than what we have, if you can say amen. amen. In the process of time they brought. You got time to do it. Got time for something to happen. Let me tell you what. It's always a good time. To get straight with God. How many believe that? Amen. God, I want to get straight. Come on, get God. Go, go, it's true. I want you to stand with me this morning. And you know what we're going to do is have the correct thing. To correct what we need. You know, I, I tell you one thing. That, that, that when I was young and, and growing up, I, 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 things have changed so much from when I was young. But you know, the, the 35, 37 years I've served the Lord, he has not changed. He has not changed. His mercy is still the same. He's been good to us. He loves you where you are and, and, and where you're at. So we're going to make the correct decision 
to bring to the Lord what we're supposed to bring that he instructs us to bring. Can you say amen? amen. You know, how I many of y'all will let know that God's not a hard taskmaster? Amen. amen. I said he's not a hard taskmaster. He's the one working on our behalf. He's the one that make it doable. Amen. And it's okay. And he said, he said, thou knowest what to do. He said, if you do it, won't it be all right? And that kind of just, that kind of sound like a parent, you know. Go in there and pick your room up. And we'll go get pizza. <laughs> go in there and pick them toys up. Go get your bicycle out of the driveway. And we're going to go to Popeye's. It, it, it amazing, you man. You know what? A child never learned anything with the bicycle being run over. He learns by instructions how to keep it from getting run over. Amen. I mean, y'all believe God rather have your life with instructions instead of having your bicycle run over this morning. Amen. Amen. And when he reveals to us, let's do just like what he said. And how he said. And the way he said. And if we do that, come on. You know what makes people different today is their choice. What makes people different today in the church is their choice of the scriptures over what they feel and their idea. Yeah. You know, and I, I can just look and I, I just can see, I, I just believe that Cain's was, was a fine layout. Just fine fruits, vegetables, just, to, just look at it. Look what I did. You know, but what, what we need to do is take his direction, whatever he says, and do that. Okay. And it'll be, it'll be correct, amen. Father, we just come to you in Jesus' name. We just thank you, Father God, that we need direction, correction, Lord. We need that those things that you send us to do, Lord. They'll glorify you and they'll edify you and they won't, they won't be against my brother, Father God. And my brother won't be my reason, Father God. That we just come to that place, Lord, that to not give out of our own concept or forgive out of our own concept or be believers out of our concepts, Lord, but out of the scriptures, Lord, being led by the Spirit and what you said. And we know, Father God, that in the process of time, you'll call upon us to do that which you need us to do and have us to do. And we thank you for choosing such as us at a time as this. And we just ask you to forgive us where we failed you, where we come short. And we just ask, Lord God, you put a rightness in us, a correctness, Lord God, to do that which is needed. And we just ask you to bless this house, Lord, and we just bind every satanic spirit, every demon, every imp. And we lose angels in this place, Lord, and these houses, their homes, Lord, the rest of peace at their abodes. And we speak good things to them, Father, their greats, their grands, their kids, Father God, all things that pertain to their life. Touch us, Lord God, we may be just a force in the earth today. Again, Father God, we ask you to lead us and guide us that we'll bring that which is acceptable to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. All right, give him a big hand clap of praise. Amen, if you would.